Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Okay. Ready? Right. Fucking thing sucks. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing it live. Welcome to another episode of My Two's Touch with your boy Shooter. All right, ladies and gents, what's going on? It's cold in the D. Not as cold as it used to be, but it's still cold in the D. We got Flash Smack in the building. Actually, got to start with my premium uh, members, <laughs> Wisdom Bars. He said, let's do it. Last live of the year. Actually, we got one more, and that will be with my brother from another mother, Rice TVX. We will be going live tomorrow. Please tune in. Year in review of crypto in 2022. I called it a year to never, ever forget episode 92. We're going to get it live, get it going, get it cracking, uncut, and as I say, <laughs> unraw. All right? So please join me tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with me at Rice TV. X. D. M. X. All right. So one more. One more, guys. One more live stream. Jerome Jones in the building. Hit the like button. Yes. Or are you the feds, man? Listen, it don't cost you nothing to smash that button. Red Robles is in the building. Best damn intro. <laughs> Growing meds. We got Art saying Greta negative one, Tate zero. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Greta one, Tate zero. I got you now. I got you. No, nah, man, Greta ain't one shit. Uh, R.A. Daniel chilling, posted up here, sipping on some yak. Uh, you must be black. Uh, Todd in the building. 64 ECG is in the house with you as well. Thank you for tuning in, my friend. Uh, guys, welcome to another episode. Uh, yes, it is the end of the year. Um, I'm grateful. I know you guys are grateful to be here. Man, the last two years have been years to never ever forget i tell you it's been some trials and tribulations uh for us as a society um crypto you know it's ups and downs um it's been crazy but at least 2022 man for crypto it has been one hell of a story that will go down in history a train here in the building a shot for him thank you for tuning in my friend yeah, it's been one hell of a uh, story this year, guys. You, I, If you would have told me it was going to go down like this at the beginning of 2022, I would have said, you damn lie. You's a damn lie. Get over to bloodalytics.com right now. You got two more days to even take advantage of a lifetime subscription. I'm taking this joint off. It's not even going to be possible for you to get a discount in two more days so take advantage of the 40 percent off discount for a lifetime subscription to blood Analytics, where you'll be in a telegram room okay you get alerts for to go long or short on bitcoin versus usdt ethereum versus usdt binance versus usdt and we're going to be adding more in the future you also have access to my alpha system which is like a even more accurate version i'm still testing it out but you'll have access to that as well in the room so you get two different systems essentially um for the price of one 40 percent off the lifetime membership and if i have any members i'm going to drop this in the chat room in the blood analytics chat room if i have any members that are already members of blood analytics and want to take advantage of the lifetime subscription hit me up dm me uh we'll work something out for you if you want to do that uh ra said jm by way of southern california crenshaw but i'm here in illinois i got you bro that's what's up illinois in the building illinois in the building i was watching and this is the first time i ever watched this i set, I set up to like three o'clock in the morning watching this guy cj on 32s first time watching that guy it's pretty uh pretty, pretty interesting lifestyle he lives he's out in illinois uh I just would that reminded me of that. That's all that's why I'm saying that. But uh yeah, it was a pretty crazy channel he has there. Uh so yeah guys, take advantage of that. 
If you don't want to do that, you can always sign up for the six month and 12 month and save 50% if you do three things. Sign up. <laughs> That's number one. Uh, also, go over to Fairdesk with the link in the description below. Well, actually, don't sign up first. I'm doing this all wrong. First thing you do, click the link in the description below, Fairdesk.com. Send me your UID number uh, once you deposit a thousand dollars, and then I will pr uh, generate a promo code for you, a custom promo code that will give you fifty percent off either six month or twelve month subscriptions. But again, try to take advantage if you can that lifetime. That's the best deal, and it won't be here for a while. Okay, so I'm taking it down after the new year, so you won't even be able to purchase that lifetime subscription. Let's take a look at. Elmo. Yes. Lucifer is down there trying to take Elmo away from us. And uh at this point, Jesus has taken the will. I mean, we keep we keep having these medio like just step down but not really going anywhere. We bounced off of the 16,340 range and I told you guys if we if we close below this range, um I would be more concerned and preparing for a move or a leg further down and to either bounce off the bottom of that channel that green box you see there or breach it as you guys see with this yellow line here maybe a, a, a slight bounce and then a move down to elmo okay mr elmo down there screaming with gasoline draws on i think we're still going there now do we hold it i'm hoping so I hope you hope we hold twelve thousand seven hundred, uh, because if we don't, it is not a good look at all. Bro, Koshi is in the building. What's going on, bro? Thank you for tuning in. A train said Illinois represent. Okay, A train in the building from Illinois as well. J M mean I'm Jamaican. Oh, I got you, bro. I got you, Jamaican. Bomb ball clock. <laughs> Flat smack, go all in on the red line. Got it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> if you, I'm not giving you, <laughs> I'm not giving you financial advice. Flat smack, you can uh, proceed how you want to. I'm definitely buying some. I'm not going all in, but I'm I'm nibbling at twelve seven hundred for sure. Absolutely. Twenty nine people in the building right now. Once you get on that stage, smack that thumbs up button, like. Chris Rock was talking about your wife and you were laughing about it initially, then she got you in order. So yes, smack that thumbs up for me. It definitely improves the viewership while I'm live. I wanna get more people in here while we are live. Uh, 29, 28 people right now. We got my cousin in the building, Chavez. Thank you for tuning in. We in here, gotta get that lifetime fam. Yeah, hit me up, bro. No, no problem, hit me up. Will Smith it baby. Yes, get jiggy with it. Nah nah nah. Psh. Oh get jiggy with it. Nah nah nah. Uh, 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 uh. Fuck it. Uh, uh, uh. I met uh, I messed that up. I messed that up. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh who else we got here? Uh RA Daniel said, yeah, man, I'm in Illinois right now. Be back in Vegas after the new year. Yeah, get get your ass out of Illinois. Cold Illinois. Go back to Vegas, man. I mean, God. Uh, one last thing, ladies and gents. Please get over to Rumble in the Jungle. That's right, Rumble.com. I'm dropping the link in the chat room right now. Please get over there and subscribe to my channel. I'm doing basically mirroring all the videos that I have here on YouTube. In addition to that, I'm doing all my uncensored stuff there. So you definitely want to check me out on Rumble because that's where the uncensored content will reside, ladies and gentlemen. Last night, man, I did three live streams yesterday. I was on Around the Blockchain with my man Rice. Um, he was he was a panelist on Around the Blockchain on BitBoy channel. Uh, and I also did Debate Crypto last night with Magic, Internet Money, and Lifer. Yes, life. A round of applause for all of them. That was a great stream. Go check that out on my channel or also on Debate Crypto if you're part of them. Go sign up and uh, 
at least become a member uh subscriber to debate crypto great channel my man crypto keeper that's my guy all right again i'm not going to go over anything here in regard to economic news because ain't none uh so let's get into this because you know I, for many years now so i got a lot of new subscribers but for many years i've been warning and very concerned about quantum computing okay and the ramifications of that on crypto now crypto is the least of our concerns to be honest with you uh and, and that's what this naked security article kind of highlights here they're not talking about crypto at all cryptocurrencies that is but they are talking about cryptography and the uh the impact of quantum computing okay so the u.s did pass a quantum computer cybersecurity prepared it pre preparedness act i can never say that word um and it kind of goes through that and whatnot but i just want to highlight a couple of things in this article this is not really related to crypto but it is cryptocurrencies or blockchain so quantum computing enthusiasts claim the performance improvements <clears throat> will be so drastic that encryption keys that could once comfortably have held uh, out against even the richest and most anti anti antagonistic governments in the world for decades might suddenly turn out to be breakable in half an afternoon by a modest group of spirited enthusiasts so this is an issue this is definitely an issue and and as i tell you guys all the time we as humans have issues with keeping track of exponential growth and that's what is going ha going on with computing power right now the quantum computing power is growing at an exponential rate so it doesn't look like it's creeping up or making that much progress year by year if you just look at it but man it's going to slowly but quickly i know it's oxymoronic but it will speed up at a pace where if we don't take steps like this to do something about it uh we will be left with our pants down okay and to go further this is the issue that i have this is the issue first before we get to that i want to tell you guys about the two algorithms that currently are available and and are used for quantum computing those two are the grover's quantum search algorithm and the shores quantum i didn't know about grover's but i did know about the shores quantum factor factorization algorithm so the grover's algorithm usually if you want to search a random order set to answer uh to a set of answers to see if you're in the list you would expect to plow through the entire list at worst before getting a definite answer grover's algorithm however given a big and powerful enough quantum computer claims to be able to complete the same feat with about the square root of the usual effect thus doing lookups that would normally take two to the n times two to the two n times tries uh in just two in of the tries of instead of um, what i just mentioned there which is now imagining cracking that hash in two to the 64th goals or tries so i know we're kind of getting this is a math and quantum uh not quantum but computer science stuff here but i'm just trying to help you think of versus two to the 128th operations or passes going down to two to the 64th passes that's a huge reduction it doesn't seem like that but that's exponentially less okay shores is the one that i'm i'm familiar with okay and this is more along the lines of encryption algorithms all right so in the shores quantum algorithm let's see amazingly promises to solve this problem with the logarithmic a logarithm of the usual effort thus factoring a number of 200 or i should say 2048 binary digits should take just twice as long as factoring a 1024 bit number not twice as long as factoring a 2047 bit number representing a huge speed up 
So anyway, clearly, I don't want to bore you guys with that, but clearly part of the risk here is not only, this is what I've been very worried about when it comes to your anonymous coins and your anonymous tokens. This highlighted point right here. And again, this is really a bigger issue than crypto. So listen to this. Clearly, part of the risk here is not only that we might need new algorithms or bigger keys or even longer hashes in the future, but here's here's the key here. But also that digital secrets and attest, uh, attestations that we create today and expect to remain secure for years or decades might suddenly become crackable within uh, the useful lifetime of the passwords and the hashes concerned. So this is where I, where I have an issue with things that are encrypted now that really won't change that data encryption can't or won't change, but it's important, but maybe in 10, 15 years, it can easily be cracked. So what, I, what do I mean by that? I, what I mean by that is let's take I'm, a prime example is using cryptocurrencies. So if we have, uh, some type of anonymous coin you're using right now today or you've been using from now or since you know crypto started right all those transactions it yeah we may be able to in the future uh quantum proof ourselves with uh, hashes in the future but what what about the the things that happened today or in the past so that means anything that has happened today or in the past can be decrypted and you can expose yourself to all the transactions every move you've made sometime in the future that's my problem okay and so that is something i'm concerned about when it comes to those anonymous coins i'm not i don't have a lot of faith in them i'm gonna be honest with you and it's for that very reason so we will see what happens when the future collides with the present what do you guys feel about that? Are you concerned about quantum computing and the quantum algorithms? I am. I'm definitely concerned here. 64ECG says quantum computing and AI sounds like Skynet to me. It sure is. It sure is. A good team of hackers will be able to hack the US military and use their drones against them. No, that's the thing. Like for things going forward, no, I don't think, you know, we will have that problem. We will be ahead of any quantum computations. Lynn De Jesus says, not concerned at all. Why not? That's way down the line, bro. No, it is not. If you if you in the computer science, you know it's not way down the line. Not at all, my friend. Facts, we can barely keep up with tech and AI. Yeah. Yep. So just something, I just wanted to drop that nugget on you guys to keep keep you up to speed a little bit on what's going on outside of crypto, but kind of relating to crypto. Now, this doesn't relate to crypto, but boy, they didn't took the top G down. Get a shot for Andrew Tate. You, hate, you can hate them or you love them, but you got to respect them. Andrew Tate detained in Romania over rape and human trafficking case. Oh my goodness, controversial online influencer Andrew Tay has been detained in Romania as part of a human trafficking and rape investigation. Now it's ironic that this happens just shortly after and I saw I, the comment that my guy made, Art, Greta 1, Tate 0, it's kind of ironic that he gets detained right after going in hard on Greta. I'm just saying, I hear you Art, I hear you. Tate, who was detained alongside his brother Tristan, had his house raided in the capital of Bucharest. Police spokesman confirmed the arrest to BBC. Mm. It's funny because um, I think yesterday or the day before, they fixed it since his Wikipedia page had Greta up there as a win or a loss to Greta. <laughs> and this column up here, they have since taken that down, but I uh, thought that was interesting. that someone did that on wikipedia but uh hey man i, I don't know man I, I think uh he speaks so much truth i said this on hotep jesus 
live stream last night i was in the chat room i said it's what happens when keeping it real goes wrong it's that simple it's what happens when keeping it real goes wrong i'm just saying you guys think he's going to do any time over this or he will he get out he should have i watched his last interview and it's actually the interview that i highlighted in yesterday's video um the part i highlighted in yesterday's video regarding um you know his comments about crypto going forward and people who have made money in crypto in the last two years in that same video he talked about where he would want to live and where he has he spends most of his time he said of course romania but he also said dubai he should have kept his ass in dubai <laughs> He should have kept his ass in Dubai. Um, so yeah, I don't know the details of this. However, it seems pretty ironic. And the timing, coincidental. For sure. I don't know about you, but we'll see how this pans out for him. But uh, it's, it's, it's not a good look for him. They want his head. They want his head. I didn't read through this whole thing. But this is out of BBC News. Maybe I'll drop a link for you guys to check this out later. And it actually went, it happened fairly just before I went live yesterday or right after. I think it was before I went live. It happened. So, oh well. Cardano, your boy Hoskinson knows how to keep himself in the news, doesn't he? Co founder, or founder, I should say, of Cardano, Charles Hoskinson's. Pokes fun at Gemini after alleged data leak. So uh, evidently uh, there was a hack on the Gemini exchange and the security incident resulted in users, users information from the exchange being sold on the dark web. Mm, not a good look. So the Cardano founder tweeted a um a meme in response to a comment regarding gemini not listing ada <laughs> why do you think gemini hasn't listed ada yet guys i'm 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 wondering why they haven't like i'm not a huge fan of ada yet i think it has a lot of uh potential a lot of potential for sure they're taking their they're taking their damn <laughs> slow snail pace time that's for sure that's one of my criticisms um but i think it's overvalued for what it brings to the table today today that's all i'm saying today i'm from south central i always seen when keeping it real goes wrong facts yeah right exactly romania probably just shake shake him down for money maybe It's spicy, the Andrew stuff. Yeah, what do you think about that, Lynn? You think he's guilty? Red River in the building. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Damn, Biden ain't bailing out Tate. Hell no. He doesn't... It, you know what? You want to know something crazy? Like the interviews and little snippets. I've only seen three interviews of his. The first one I told you guys yesterday was uh, fairly... I'm really just getting hip to this guy. But it was uh, Patrick Bett, Valuetainment. That was the first interview I ever saw of, of Tate. It's like a four-hour interview. Then I saw one on some other podcast. I, I didn't know they were the biggest podcast in the game. Two white dudes and like the other guy looks like Somalian or something. Um, or Ethiopian. I don't know what that one... I don't know the name of that podcast. So that was the second one. And then this is the third one I've seen of his from these guys out in Strike It Big is what it's called. The podcast Strike It Big uh, out in the UK. The one thing I that's consistent, he is very vocal about any and everything except he will not talk about the US. If you think about it, peep it out. He will not talk about the US. <laughs> He will not say anything about the president, his feelings about Trump. He will not talk anything about the U.S. So that lets you know he's had some run-ins with some powerful people from here. And he, he something happened. 
Something happened. That video of him slapping that girl around, I didn't see that. That's no good. <clears throat> That's no good. Stan Shelton said, Kevin Samuels update. Did Fed agent Fuddle set up Brandon and Andrew Tate? <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That's crazy, Stan. And S Kevin Samuels is dead, right? Uh, Rand said he was set up, but he fell for it and is guilty. Hmm. Mr. Tequila said, glad people will get their funds back. However, I think they had them all along, maybe trying to get away with stealing funds, but backlash and authorities making them pay for it. So we're going to talk about that. Thank you, Mr. Tequila, for tuning in. We're going to talk about that very thing. There are some new details about FTX announcing plans to restart returning users' funds, and we're going to get into that in just a minute. Some, some shady stuff going on, ladies and gents. Tate Pappy Rip uh, used to work for the Alphabet Boys. I think the NSA, not sure, but his pops was a high up brother in the Alphabet Boys. I didn't know that. I knew he played chess. <clears throat> and I knew Tate lived here in, in the D. He lived in Detroit for a very short time with his father. When Beetlejuice Howard Stern. <laughs> Classic. Salute from Ghana. That's what's up, brother. Shout out to my people over in Ghana. Stan, I heard about that. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. I didn't know about that Kevin Samuels video. And he's been dead. When people get money from FTX back, will they pump on the market? Nah. I don't think so. I don't think so, my friend. Yeah, so guys, uh, not, oh, so let me just finish this up. So this is not a good look for Gemini, right? They're already in a whirlwind of trouble anyway with regards to Gemini and, and the whole digital currency group and all that stuff going on. Earlier this month, the Gemini Crypto Exchange announced it faced security issues. A hacker group recently started advertising the database containing the personal information of about 5.7 million users, including phone numbers and email addresses. Now, again, uh, I think your boy is very salty. I mean, he, he's... If you think about and look at Charles Hoskinson's attitude toward exchanges that don't like him or people or you know big figureheads that don't like him or communities that don't like cardano he's real he's got a real funky attitude about it and i think he should change his position and just put his head down and focus on his project and get it as far as he can and instead of asking for respect earn respect earn the community's respect i'm not saying he hasn't earned any thus far but I'm saying if you want, I, I kind of see where he wants more respect, that the level of respect isn't there in his opinion about Cardano. If you want that, my G, put your head down, smoke your cigar, and keep coding. <laughs> keep coding. Um, the Dingleberry Twins. Yes, the Dingleberry Twins Gemini. That's right. Lynn Day Jesus said, my question is, did my client get their money back yet? Serious question. I don't know what COX, what is that? Help me out, brother. I think SBF tried to wash the stolen money through the, bah the Bahamian government, but the Fed quashed. No, you know what? It's crazy because I don't know how many of you like are watching BitBoy and his involvement in this whole situation. The article that I'm going to show you guys doesn't mention BitBoy. But BitBoy is, um, he's got a lot of details that only he has in regards to assets and real estate that is, has been funneled through shelf, like, you know, shelf companies, um, and all types of stuff, right? And I don't know if he turned it over to the Bohemian government or not, or what's going on with that, but... Yeah, he's got some, some some real big dirt on 
FTX, and Sam. So maybe that's why. Maybe that's, and I'll get to that in a second here. Maybe that is why uh, the Bohemian government is looking to freeze some stuff. So look at this one out of Coin Telegraph. FTX founder reportedly cashes out 684000 after being released on bail. Mm. How the hell is this guy able to... First of all, this lets you know that he is delusional. Like, he's making people on the spectrum look bad right now. I'm just, If he's really on the spectrum. He's making them look real bad right now. Like, come on, man. We in blockchain. You know, every move is in the open. And people never forget the internet never loses, right? The whole the whole saying is the internet always wins. The internet always wins. We're always there's always gonna be somebody remember something that you did back in XYZ month of this XYZ year that is they're they're gonna they're gonna catch you on it. And all you need is a open transparent blockchain or network where all transactions have to cross over for for this to really be activated on some super super man this is this is crazy so anyway sbf allegedly cashed out six hundred four eighty four thousand dollars from a crypto exchange while being under house arrest according to on chain investigation now again i don't know what he think he's doing he's only making it worse for himself He's only making it worse for himself. Like this guy at this point, like I thought for a little while that maybe he'll do 10 years, but his actions to me, ladies and gentlemen, is showing me he will end up doing 20 years plus easily 20 years plus. SBF cashed out this amount and an exchange while being under house arrest, according to the on-chain investigation by DeFi educator, Bao Tao Bao Ted Guana. I don't know how you pronounce that name. But Bao took to Twitter on December 29th to report on a series of obfuscated wallet transactions allegedly linked to SBF, suggesting that the former FTX CEO could have violated release conditions <laughs> to not spend more than a thousand dollars without permission again. Here, here we go. Like he really thinks he's above the law because he gave 40 million to the Democratic. <laughs> I just don't understand this guy. According to Bao analyst uh, analysis, SBF's public address on December 28th sent all remaining ETH to a newly created address. Oh man, he wanted some money for Christmas, huh? Bao noted that the SBF. Uh, the SBF took over the address that was originally owned by Sushi Swap, the creator from Chef Nami, in August 2020. So that was the the, the address, I guess, SBF thought people were going to forget about. It just it just doesn't make any sense, guys. You can't make this stuff up. When SBF agreed to take over control of the Sushi Swap exchange from the anonymous founder, Chef Nami. In August of 2020, he asked for ownership to be transferred to his Ethereum address. Come on, man. Wow. I forgot SBF took over Sushi Swap. I was in Sushi Swap back then, and remember, now I'm putting two and two together. I, I didn't even realize SBF was SBF then. That's crazy. That is so crazy, man. Let's get to some of these comments really quickly. Yeah, we need Monero USD. That's funny. FTX clients are not getting their money back. I don't believe that they are. Look at where the he funneled all the money into. How are you going to get that back? Um, you can liquidate, but it will be liquidated at pennies on the dollar. Wow, BitBoy, one degree of separation from Sam. We're all so close. It's crypto. He can cash out whatever he wants i mean it's unstoppable blockchain this is true it's unstoppable but not untrackable so at the end of the day i think he's just writing his own sentence with this behavior like what is he thinking 
Joe Biden will bail out FTX. I'm surprised Hunter Biden was in, was involved or wasn't involved. I'm assuming you you meant. Um, no, Hunter Biden is too dumb to be involved in crypto. He'd be smoking crack, not crypto. Marcus Walter said, we will never see Bitcoin go under 16000 again. Man, I've heard them type of statements before, Walter. Look at shop. The never statements. Um, Art said, he's a crypto klepto. He just can't help himself. I think you're right. I really think you're right. He, he has some type of mental disease where he literally cannot help himself. Wisdom Bar says, SBF think he's Scarface or something. I'm trying to tell you. Man, SBF paid Chef Nami for the keys to the kingdom. Yeah, now I'm just putting two and two together, man. I, I totally forgot SBF was that. It was that guy. He was that guy that took over Sushi Swap back then. Yep, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Red River said we will never see Bitcoin go under the price of one ounce of gold again. Now that I still can't agree with because never means never. Okay. Uh, like Zero's, Zero Head says on a long enough time frame or timeline, everything goes to zero. But I get what you're saying. In our lifetime, probably not. Probably not. I'm long 16.4. At the uh at the moment blood feeling kind of bullish i hear you brother long like that button yes man Get on that stage ladies and gents smack that like button like chris rock was talking about your wife. please make that happen for me all right guys so uh i want to get to the next article which is um actually let me see if I, there's anything else in this article that i want to pull out because <laughs> you can't make this shit up ladies and gents within hours uh received transfer totaling uh 366 or uh, 67 thousand dollars man this guy's paid in full but unfortunately he's gonna have to do time like mitch and unfortunately he ain't coming back home after that. Ain't no getting back out, getting that red cherry, that cherry red M3 beam. Nope, not happening, brother. You're going to be sitting down for a very long time. So according to all the funds were sent to a centralized crypto exchange and to the crypto bridge, Ren Bridge, according to DeFi analysts. Man, they breaking this shit down. Wow. This address sent a total of 519 and a half ether approximately around 629,000. now it's interesting because remember yesterday or the day before i, I recovered that i think he transferred 120 thousand dollars right but now we're seeing either that's in addition to so that 120 thousand that he transferred is part of the 600 or that that 600 is an addition additional amount of money that he's transferred out and siphoned out from FTX. I, I just don't understand. Now, I will say this. This is the only industry where something like this can happen and nobody can do anything about it while it's going on. Think about it. If a, if a company goes bankrupt or goes into bankruptcy in traditional sense, all assets are frozen easily, right? All bank accounts are frozen very easily not a problem to do that but when you have assets that are on the blockchain uh it's, it's harder to, to freeze this stuff so this is the real really the first time we're able to see something like this happen but the the irony of it all and the the dumb part of it all is that we know who is behind it and he knows we know it's like come on man you, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me you got to be kidding me. R.A. Daniel said, did I just see that Chalet's this little fool gonna get murked or pressed behind the wall? Good luck, Sam. You're gonna need it. Yeah, he's he's done, man. This is exactly how the use of this technology. True. Very true. 
Mount Gox happened before, man. True. Mr. Sakila said, we should be doing the same and not saying we need more regulation. No, I, I'm with you. I'm totally with you. I don't think we need more regulation. That is not the problem. This FTX issue is not because of lack of regulation. They were regulated heavily by the U.S. SEC. And we see nothing. They found nothing. They were able to stop nothing. So I'm with you. What's the difference between FTX and Mt. Gox? A few letters. I mean, <laughs> clearly. You got a T and an X in Mt. Gox, but no F. And yeah, that's it. It's a few letters. That's the only difference. I'm just playing. The difference is, I think, and I've heard some people opine on this. You know, people have said that Mt. Gox is, was worse than FTX. I disagree. I think FTX is worse. FTX is worse because the contagion is bigger. We're now seeing, and you know, I, I reported on this, guys. There is room, there's evidence that Sam Bankman Freed actually could have caused Terra Luna to go down. So, it, it looks like FTX started this whole wide mess of chaos and contagion and bankruptcy in crypto in 2022 that's what it's looking out we'll we will see but is it is looking like sbf caused all of this ladies and gentlemen all of this additionally sbf linked wallet sent three tranches of two hundred thousand dollars worth of usdt to the fixed float exchange man I don't know that this necessarily qualifies as spending money. They are his assets already. Hmm. Okay. A number of online commenters uh, also speculated that SBF himself was Chef Nami. The anonymous. Oh, what about that? Juan Fitty. Give me, <laughs> give me your, give me your opinion on that one. That SBF was Juan, was uh, Juan Fitty. Was Chef Nami all alone? Wow. I never even thought about that. That would be crazy. This guy would be the Kaiser of crypto. Remember usual suspects or unusual suspects? <laughs> he's, he's the one standing up at the end, uh, walking out without the limp. Man, if this guy SBF ends up being Chef Nami, I'm done. I'm done. Juan Fitty said, no, nah, he wasn't Chef Nami. Okay. Okay. That Yeah, that, that'd be nuts, wouldn't it, Dave? That would be crazy. Nope, he wasn't Chef Nami uh, in Singapore. Yeah, well, we don't know that. How do we know that? If he's anonymous, how do we know he was in Singapore? Chef Nami, that is. U.S. to probe hack on FTX. Now, don't forget, there are so many layers to this, ladies and gents. Don't forget, right after they announced bankruptcy, there was this anonymous hack, right? Where like 300 million was drained. We, we This is apart from what I just talked about, okay? So... Kaiser Souza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. AZTV said, Blood check, Ren, BTC. Sam dumped that as soon as he got out. Wow. After he dumped the def, dev fund, the community docs, Chef Nami. Oh, wow. SBF might turn out to be Satoshi for all we know. I'm done, I'm done with crypto if, if that guy is Satoshi. No way, no way, no way, no how. No way, no how, ladies and gents. So look at this. The U.S. prosecutors are now probing or looking into the hack on FTX exchange. And uh, this happened again on November 11th and the early in the, and the early hours of November 12th, shortly after the prominent crypto exchange filed for bankruptcy and SBF stepped down as CEO. 
Yeah, the timing again. I don't believe in coincidences. This is some bullshit. Late on Friday night, November 11, several, several wallets allegedly belonging to FTX were drained of hundreds of millions of dollars in cryptocurrencies. Yeah. So the hack priced the seizure at $650 million. An investigation by chain analysis produced the same estimate. So yeah, we got the uh, U.S. prosecutors, federal prosecutors. Um, they've started a probe, guys. And you know the feds. They will use all resources at their disposal. And we'll find. They will definitely find out what's going on here. They will definitely find. So the you, you got to also remember the DOJ, Department of Justice, has launched a criminal investigation into the hack as well. So you got two separate departments look into this they're going to find out what is going on and if sam bankman free is found to be a part of this or behind this this guy is going under the jail I'm sorry. I, I, I just i don't i don't know what else to tell you i really don't art says chico crypto proof elon is satoshi nonsense Dan Limmer was Satoshi. Possibly. You on to something there. He could have been part of the group. No doubt. Ask me to look against that. No way he should. Satoshi. They stand as total opposites of each other. God can't help. I told you guys who Satoshi was. We're not going to go through this again. I told you guys who Satoshi Nakamoto was in Crypto Domus's book, aka Crypto Blood. You guys remember Salochi or Paul Leroux. Check that guy out. I don't know what video I did recently to bring up the video I did three years ago or two years ago on that. So is there's a guy named Paul Leroux. Let me see. I'm gonna type it in here really quickly. Paul Leroux. Okay, let me bring this up for you guys. This is, in my opinion, Paul Calder LaRue, a former programmer, former criminal cartel boss, and informant to the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. He's serving a life sentence in prison. He was notorious. Notorious, guys. The guy literally had one of he's had he had many aliases okay guns drugs and money that sounds like bitcoin sounds like bitcoin to me salochi calder leru come on now guys salochi nah man i honestly um i really do think this guy is either one of the satoshis or the main guy the only guy I should say. Okay. And it was funny because Mark Shrelly came out and said this last week or so. And I said, wait a minute. Wh where were you guys when, when Crypto Blood said this three years ago? F Martin Shrelly. I said it a long time ago. So Martin Shrelly, Martin Shrelly, Shrelly thinks he is Toshi as well. He probably got it from me. uh let's see here sounds like bitcoin to me first bitcoin i bought I mean, <laughs> good one az hey like real talk sounds like bitcoin now that's not bitcoin anymore but that sounds like bitcoin to me too my g keep messing with these rich people's cash sam it will earn you a dirt nap for sure for sure if he is if he is he's going to be filthy rich when he gets out in 2020 2043 are you referring to sbf or paul aru because paul aru ain't never getting out let's see his code you can tell by coding style so uh, again um i'm going to find which video just recently i talked about this guys 
because just give me a second. Um, I want to find the uh, the video I talked about this in really quickly. Uh, it's not there. Yeah, I have to find it later, guys. But Paul, I'm searching my YouTube. Satoshi. One second, guys. Satoshi. Yeah, it's way too many videos to look for. Way too many videos, ladies and gents. Not even gonna try to do it right now. But yeah, this is the guy, man. I read the whole write-up on it, and I was like, damn, this is it. Maybe this is the actual article. No, it doesn't look like it from December 30th, 2022. Mm -hmm. So look at this, guys. I'm gonna bring this up really quickly. So you guys can see this. This is from Bitcoin.com. 48-year-old former programmer and criminal cartel, Paul LaRue, was deemed a Satoshi Nakamoto suspect in the spring of 2019. The suspicious, uh, the suspicion caused a few people to believe LaRue is the most credible Satoshi yet. And to this day, individuals still think it is him. The following editorial is the eighth installment of news.bitcoins, um, the, the mini facts series with a comprehensive look at the circumstantial evidence that is tethered to Paul Leroux. Bitcoin's mysterious threat. So look, the thing why this all does line up, I'm gonna be honest with you, because in Craig Wright's Florida deposition or, you know, um, case that he had in Florida against the Klein brothers or whatever, Klein family estate. Paul LaRue comes up in, in the case. Like, it's not like he has no linkage to Craig Wright and, and Klein and some other people earlier in the days, guys. Like, real talk. This guy, I think, is the real deal this is the this is satoshi and the reason why those wallets haven't moved is because the fool is in jail he's in jail and he's in jail for life so they will never move and he most likely doesn't have access to all that hardware and all the encryption encrypted hard drives and files and everything he created a type of encryption for hard hard drives he was the pioneer of of this um i don't know i can't remember exactly what but yeah this is to me this just crypto dom is speaking i think he's it ladies and gents i've thought that for many years to be honest with you uh bohemian regulators are in custody of 3.5 billion dollars worth of ftx customer assets now assets meaning like cryptos dollars what does that mean or does do they mean like ftx went and spent customers money on various real estate properties across the bahamas i, I don't know so let's take a look at this really quickly securities and exchange commission the, bah the bah uh, bahamas beat that it's the bsc on thursday said um December 29th said that it is holding a temporary basis um, the digital assets of FTX customers and creditors worth 3.5 billion based on the market price. So uh, let's see what it says here. According to the announcement, concerns of an imminent dissipation of the assets in FTX custody prompted the regulator to seize them. Good for them. As per the statement, the assets were seized on November 12th after Sam Bankman Fried announced that the exchange was being hacked. Okay, so this is news to us today, but this is uh, clearly something they did a while ago. All right. We're just getting word of this. FTX would report in its bankruptcy filing that $372 million worth of tokens were stolen from the exchange on November 11th. So ironic right the day before you go bankrupt 
blockchain researcher firm Nansen reported that amidst the, t- the quote unquote hack, FTX recorded crypto outflows of over $700 million within 24 hours. One thing I want to just highlight here I don't know if you guys remember, you, you may have heard like when all this was going down. FTX, or I should say SBF, allowed and, and opened up the crypto exchange to the be, be, uh, Bohemians, right? And allowed them to withdraw their funds. Well, I didn't know this, but I guess reportedly or apparently, no one in the Bahamas could actually invest in crypto. So who were these individuals that he opened up and allowed them to withdraw their funds. Well, guess who it was? It was all the officials, the um, the political figures in, in the Bahamas. All of the elites were able to trade crypto except their residents. Ain't that a damn shame? This is what we're dealing with, ladies and gents. Something has to change. Something has to change. You don't come out in our house as a guest SBF and play reindeer games. I hear that. Rogue Bahamian official could take off with it all yeah man i don't trust the bahamians uh flat smack says hey i'd rather it be in their hands than the sbf because this guy as one of you guys said is a klepto like he can't help himself from stealing he just he can't help it daily coin ftx japan announces plans to return users funds so this is good news FTX Japan has unveiled a roadmap to return funds to users uh, through Liquid. A few weeks ago, FTX Japan disclosed that users' funds were safe in cold wallets. FTX acquired Liquid Exchange in June to enter the Japanese cryptocurrency market. Users of FTX in Japan will be able to access their funds due to unique protection under the Japanese regulator. Good for them. Great, great, great for them. And it should be the same case for ftx.us but again because the sec doesn't do their damn job you don't have that being the scenario for u.s citizens and it's a damn it's it's a shame it's a shame ftx.us should be going through the same thing as ftx japan straight up and down okay Despite Japan's efforts to become a crypto-friendly nation, U.S.-based crypto exchange Kraken recently announced that it would shut down its operation there, citing the current market conditions. Yeah, they just got a different culture in Japan, man. If if if, if I weren't so, um, if it weren't so much different than my culture and what I'm used to, I would move there. I, but I couldn't live in Japan. I'm sorry. Shout out to everybody, my expats in Japan. Crypto blood couldn't do it. I'm gotta go visit, but I can't live there. Sorry, Konnichiwa. <laughs> um, but that's pretty much uh it today. AXA says pay you back in tourism points. Right. Right, Jerome Jones laughs at that. Yeah, guys. Um, hey, it's a slow day. Not much news, but that's what I got for you, and that's my two Satoshis on it. Uh, make sure you guys like share and subscribe and i will see you tomorrow 3 p.m eastern standard time with your boy crypto blood and rice tvx we doing an off the chain episode 92 last live stream of the year we're gonna close it out with a bang make sure you guys uh definitely come tune in then uh other than that i'm out of here it's your boy crypto blood and that's my two satoshis holla
Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Okay. Ready? Right. Fucking thing sucks. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. <laughs>